principal partner of the Victoria Racing Club. The last is the show day handicap benchmark 70 contest over the extended 1400 metres. Top weight is Think and Fly. Logan McNeil teaming up with Tom Dabney aboard this horse that goes around at a big price. At his best, he measures up, but he was playing in a couple of runs to, to conclude his previous preparation and then really playing first up today. Low draw blinkers on could see him improve, but he'd need to. Look terrific in his return to racing. Had a little bit of conditioning to come, but he's taken nice improvement out of that run. With the blinkers on today, he's still nice and relaxed, which which is a good sign. John Maloney settles up the two. Shove over here, who's looking for career win number six. He had a terrific preparation last time in work, and, and one of the races he won actually came at Flemington over 1,400 metres, where he had a beautiful run in transit. He does map for a nice run in transit today, fourth up from a low draw, and he has been caught wide in a couple of previous races, so he'll be very fit. Yeah, he looks good in the yard, but he has done his last couple. He's progressed really nicely this campaign. He's actually back bigger and stronger, and he's looked super in his last couple. He just needs to run up to his looks now. We move to horse number four. Reese Goodwin and Damien Lane combine with Montatha here, this imported son of Dubawi. It tackled 1,300 metres first up on the hillside track and, and covered ground and, and kept trying. So stepping up in distance will suit. Maybe slightly up in distance today isn't further enough considering they stretch him out to the mile and, and even 2,000 metres back in his European days. But it was an encouraging return at big odds. Yeah, he was uh, eight weeks into that run at Sandown. He's a big, gross horse. Uh, tends to need uh, a little bit of racing uh, as well. Uh, so certainly when you look at the size of him wandering around and mounting out, it's not an indication of his fitness. He's lovely and relaxed moving around, and he looks uh, pretty good in the coat too, so no negatives. Kiramar and David Eustace with a couple of runners in this race, including Arnold first up. The market adored this horse when he was in New South Wales. He was going around for Chris Waller. He's running some big figures and, and running some really good races on soft tracks. He's since come down to Victoria. He hasn't quite been able to recapture some of that in, in his sole Victorian run, but it was on a heavy track, and he's here off a bit of a 12-week freshen up, and the jump out at Bendigo wasn't bad work. He's got good size and athleticism. His coat's in pretty good order for this time of year. I think he's probably got the capacity to brighten up a touch, but he's moving really well in the yard, and he's nice and relaxed. Can the seven think winning go back-to-back -back for Julius Andrew? He'd probably need to find a length or, or a few others to rate down, but he's in terrific form of late. Swap the runs with the winner a couple back at Cranbourne and, and he wins the race when he ran really fast time. And then on a good four track at Sale last study, he got clear and, and burst through. And, and he's a, a dry tracker as well, so he'll appreciate the dry track today. He'll just need a little uh, luck from that wide draw as they'll want to be positive. Yeah, he's nice and fit. He's racing well and he's holding his condition, so it looks like he's coping really well with his preparation and he's uh, nice and settled in the yard today, so no negatives. Gawler trainer Darren McLeod with another runner here at Flemington. It's East India Man. Yeah, he might have won over shorter trips in the past, but he's a 1,400-metre horse. He had every chance last start in, in a 64 at Balaclava, so this is a bit of a steep rise in class for him, but I think he's just looking for this trip third up, and he can improve. He always parades well, this horse. He's a real professional. He's always turned out in super order, and he's well-conditioned again for this. We move to the 11, Rhinoceros here. Blake Shin, another opportunity to bring up a four-timer aboard this son of Vatamos. Yeah, I would have loved to see the track playing a little more uh, leaderish and on speed, but he does look set to run a good race third up because he's back in distance out of a really fast run race at Caulfield last night. Went some 10 lengths inside standard to the 600. He was right up there on speed and, and knocked up. He's actually held on okay to only be beaten two and a half. Drops in distance, Blake Shin on, goes forward, can use that fitness and stay there for a long way. He's a really good style of horse, and when I saw him last start, I thought he probably just needed one more to get to his peak. Uh, probably the best I've seen him step out in the yard this preparation today. Bill Papazaharadakis and Tom Stockdale team up with the unbeaten Russian Meteor, looking to go three from three. He's a fascinating runner, this fella. Now, maybe staying at 1,400 metres will be a negative because it takes him a long time to wind up, but his two wins on the Pakenham Synthetic have had plenty of substance. He grew wings in a fast race on debut, and then he went around favourite in a Class 1 last start. Now, the form around him hasn't particularly jumped off the page from those races, but you can only beat what's in front of you, and he's a real line chaser. Maybe he won a little bit further, but but I'm keen to see what he can do on this bigger turf track. He's very professional in the yard for a lightly tried galloper. Um, he carries himself beautifully and has just strode around uh, really nicely. He's only neat. He certainly uh, lacks probably a little bit of physical upside, but he holds really good condition on his frame, and um, you really can't fault what he's done to date. 
Picaroon second up for the Tom Dabney stable? Yeah, she was actually pretty unlucky in, in a race that she ran at Flemington a little while back with the tempo against some charge late. And she's a mare that has a turn of foot. She had her first start for the new stable last start at Geelong, was slow away in, in a race that was dominated on speed, on a track that was dominated on speed. But I really liked her work through the line. If she can just settle that little bit closer, up to 1,400 metres, I can see her being a big improver. She's doing everything right in the mounting yard. She's ticking boxes. She looks nice and fit. She's lovely and relaxed and looks super in the coat. Another one for the Mara and Eustace camp, the 14 Galactic Fury. Uh, he's honest. He doesn't win out of turn, but he is honest. He's very fit. He's back in distance. He's a horse that's tactically versatile as well, but he'd be a place hope in this. Haven't seen him through his racing preparation uh, aside from his first up run. So again, as you'd expect, he's taken nice natural improvement uh, right through the campaign. He's nice and fit wandering around the yard today. He's very relaxed. He's just dropped his head and wandering around. Always carries good condition right the way through a preparation, this horse. Let's catch up with horse number three, Tasman Park. What are we expecting first up from the Moroni train galloper? Expecting a good run. He's only lightly raced. He's shown so far in his career that he's tactically versatile as well. And he's a horse that has a turn of foot. He's here off eight weeks. He was second in a recent Flemington jump out from up on speed. And the market loves him. He's had eight starts and six of them he's gone around favourite. Moved in the coat with a little bit of time and despite being eight weeks into this, he's uh, been kept up to the mark. Best thing about him wandering around the yard today is the fact that he hasn't got himself worked up or warm off of a freshen up. So um, he showed good mental maturity, this preparation. The five is Savoir Fair, another one of these <coughs> well-performed Tiakia horses that brings some nice New Zealand form. How do we line it up? Yeah, went around in a Group 1 derby last start prior to coming over um, to Australia and then first up in New Zealand, this time in, tackled a race over 1,200 metres, which was just a bit too sharp. I'd be expecting 1,400 metres to be too sharp today. An eye catcher when you watch him wander around the yard. Um, he's almost black, so he's got a great colour to his coat. The team have got him really well prepared for this and he's handled himself beautifully in the yard. And the third of the Mara and Eustace runners, this one with the services of Jamie Carr, horse number 10, Matron Bullwinkle. Yeah, the form around her is quite good. She clearly has some talent. The knock is the fact that she's here first up off 38 weeks, and when she won at Flemington last preparation, she really took a run to get going before she recaptured that form. So the fact that she's off 38 weeks first up today, I do expect that she'll just take a lot of benefit from this run. I'm a real fan of hers from the mounting yard. She's a nice big athletic mare. She's got good mannerisms. Uh, she moves well. She looked really forward in terms of her overall condition. Uh, she is built for foot further than 1,400 metres, but she certainly looks ready for it today. Salts, send us home with a winner, please. Uh, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I'm with Rhinoceros, back in distance, coming through a fast race. I'm hoping he can use that fitness to his advantage and be tough to get past late. Tasman Park, he's jumped out well. He maps well. He's got plenty of upside. Market loves him. Pick a rune. Perhaps a roughie for the exotics. I think she can be a big improver second up today. And, and Arnold, a horse, his form in New South Wales jumps off the page. It, it would win a race like this. Keen to stick with Tasman Park. You've had him on a top a few times this preparation, but I like the fact that he's nice and settled in the yard with a little bit of time in between runs. The team have kept him up to the mark. He looks super in the coat. Hopefully today is his day. He goes on top. Outside of that, uh, Matron Bullwinkle has come back to the races in super order. She's forward enough to be really competitive here if she's sharp enough. I liked what I saw from her in the yard. And look, the other one uh, that did take my eye but probably needs a little bit uh, further was the Tiakau Galloper but happy to have the three on top here. And the three on top is Tasman Park, who's a $4 favourite in our final race today and has been the best back galloper. The second elect, Arnold, has also been popular, now a $5 chance. Both those two runners have firmed up throughout the course of the afternoon. Russian Meteor, a $6 chance. Shove over, nine. Rhinoceros, the on-top selection from the Salts and has been $14 into $9 in the last couple of days. Matron Bullwinkle, the other runner, in single figure odds at nine fifty, but hopefully for favoured backers, Tasman Park can get the job done today. Chances are you're about to lose for free and confidential support. Call the number on screen or visit the website. Three-pronged attack for the Mara and Eustace camp in this last race. Jack Turnbull joins us. I'll put it on you. The market says that Arnold is the, the best of the three chances. Who do you think is the best of the three? Probably go Arnold. Um, Matron Bullwinkle's yeah, just coming off a freshen. She will be ridden just midfield, probably worse off and be finding the line. And Galactic Fury, although he's been racing well, he's just drawn awkwardly again. So Bo's going to have to um, yeah, give us some magic and, and slot in and then hopefully he's finding the line.
What does Carleen need to do on, on Arnold to, to give the horse the best chance of winning? Naturally, she should find herself fifth, sixth. Uh, didn't overcomplicate it, but he's a talented horse. And again, he's having a, a light fresh, and so he's first up effectively, but he's carrying a lot of residual through. Okay, so he's you know fit enough here despite that little break to, to come and, and win fresh over 14. Definitely, yeah. He's kept ticking over. As you said, he hasn't raced, so he's jumped out and done a lot of work up in Ballarat with um, with Dave Deck and guys. So um, he comes here in good shape. Just had a chat to Daniel Moore in the winner's stall about 20 minutes ago, and he was wrapped to get a winner. He was a bit dejected about his blue baggers last night. You're up and about with your, your Lions heading into a grand final, which must be nice. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, we watched the game uh, at the Middle Park Hotel with Dave, so he's uh, he's got the bottom lip on the ground. But, um, yeah, it'll be a nervous week. I won't be able to get to the game, but uh, I'll be watching on. Plenty of people that dislike Collingwood, like most of the Carlton supporters that you would have come across last night in the Lions camp, mate. Good luck today and, and good luck next Saturday. Thank you. Yeah, Jack Turnbull there representing the Mara New Sustainable. They've got three horses running around in the final event here on spring preview day at Flemington. The best of those, according to Jack, and the market is Arnold for Carleen Heffel as well. He maps well. He's a good credentialed horse. He's run some good numbers up in New South Wales prior to his sole run in Victoria. But that came on a heavy track. They've freshened him up since. He's got the re residual fitness on side and he's jumped out quite well there at Benigo. Matron Bullwinkle, a horse that Jack says they're going to ride cold and first up off 38 weeks, you'd expect that they ride her back and they just want to see her work through the line. I'd be thinking that a win from her today would be a bonus and she'll get better as she's ridden out over further. And Galactic Fury, the third of their runners, got a bit of a tricky barrier and would need to be his very best to be winning this. So Arnold, the best of the trio for the Mar Eustace camp. He also said off camera that the Lions are going to absolutely devour your beloved Magpies next Saturday. Oh, it's all talk, mate. <laughs> uh, we're, we're saving our best till last. I, I, I will say they're a good footy side. They're a good footy side. So are the Giants. They're yep. a good footy side as well. Nothing but respect for them. But, hey, you've got to get through Collingwood in Collingwood to uh, win a flag. And, look, they've done that a couple of times in the past. So I'm looking for resumption. Great time of year to be in Melbourne. Plenty of buzz about the footy finals. Group 1 racing is back. The weather is turning. We've had a, a stellar day here at Flemington. What would be nice is if we can top it off with a win. This is race number eight, the last on Spring Classics preview day. We're uh, about 30 seconds behind start time. This one might jump a minute or two late as we head upstairs to Matt Hill. Tasman Park, who's been knocking on the door, and there's been uh, a concerted uh, amount of money on it late. 4.20 into $3.80 here on VOP 4.10 the tote. Think and Fly is the first one into the stalls as they load up with Arnold and also shove over. So uh, taking their place, the first four in the gates as Montatha is about to load. Savoir Fair is rideless. Galactic Fury, East India Man to join them with Rhinoceros and Tasman Park. Picaroon, Matron Bullwinkle, Think Winning and Russian Meteor still to come along. Russian Meteor uh, two from two. And good money for that runner as well. 7.50 into $5.50. Wrapping up what's been a rather entertaining afternoon here at Flemington. Nice to see some families out on the lawn just enjoying a really relaxed day of racing here. Harlow Mists for the Sergeant Stable taking out the Oaks uh, preview and Gold Bullion taking out the Derby preview. Blake Shin with the riding on us today with a treble. Now Think Winning going into the stalls. Celine Gordray, Russian Meteor, joins them. Rhinoceros about to come along. That'll leave East India Man. And also Tasman Park to complete the line. Four dollars the tote favourite Tasman Park and now into 3.5 on official price. So they are certainly backing Tasman Park late. Tasman Park goes in. East India Man is the final one. Race 8 Flemington. East India Man takes one more turn. There's one agitated in close. Think and fly drawn in close as East India Man takes the outside. 1,420 metres to close proceedings. Set now. Ready to run. Racing now. 
Beautiful line, bar four, Galactic Fury last out. Arnold second last away. Tasman Park fired out of the gates. The lead from East India Man. They were followed a length and a quarter away. A real wall of them. Think and fly behind those horses. Picaroon isn't far away with also Shove Over and Montather. A gap to Think winning. Also Rhinoceros midfield a little wide from Russian Meteor and Savoir Fair Galactic Fury Arnold. And at the tail is Matron Bullwinkle. So they run past the 900 metres. It's East India. A man from Montatha, a length and a quarter. Tasman Park third from Shove Over. Think winning. A length and a half. Think and fly on the fence from Picaroon and out wide. A rhinoceros as they clutter up before the corner. Hasn't been that solidly run midway. Then rhinoceros deeper. Galactic Fury's getting going. Followed by Arnold Matron Bullwinkles. Well back with Savoir Fair as they run the corner and just preceding those as Russian Meteor. So it's Montatha striking the front from East India. Man Tasman Park is tanking up on the outside from Shove Over. Picaroon. Think winning under the whip and then Rhinoceros Think and Fly and Savoir Fair but it's Tasman Park on the outside 250 metres to go Billy Pins about to push the button a length and a half East India Man Think winning Rhinoceros and Matron Bullwinkle from a long way back, it's Tasman Park in the shadows in front of Think winning and Matron Bullwinkle is flying, Tasman Park needs the line, Matron Bullwinkle dives and makes this very interesting and got up I reckon, Matron Bullwinkle from Tasman Park, Think winning, then a photo for four, Picaroon and Arnold from East India a man, Russian Meteor, Savoir Fair behind them, followed next by Think and Fly, Montatha, Shove Over, Rhinoceros and Galactic Fury. And she'll get this matron, Bullwinkle, down the middle of the track. She stormed to victory for Kieran Ma, David Eustace and Jamie Carr. First up from a reasonably lengthy break and, and she's been able to find her way straight into the winner's stall just when Tasman Park looked to have pinched a, a winning break. Think winning was a, uh, a big run, looking to extend his good form, and he's run a, uh, a great race in for third. But Matron Bullwinkle, Salts, it's a big return. This is a good mare. That's a terrific return. First up, 38 weeks to 1,400 metres, and we heard from Jack pre-race. They thought Arnold was probably the best of their hopes, and they were going to ride her home and just hope that she was hitting the line. You thought anything she did today, if she was able to run on it and grab a placing, that would be lovely, and a win would be a bonus. But we've seen her win over the carnival, over 1,700 metres at Flemington in the past. And she's a, a mare that has some really good form around her from past preparations. And this was quite a good benchmark 70 that she's tackled today as well. 124.90, a, a touch slower than Wolfie earlier in the day. So even more credit to her given that she settled back. And, and Tasman Park, well, at the clock tower, you thought how far he trucked in. He got a beautiful run in transit and he ran well as did Think Winning who Julius Sandu has just got absolutely airborne at the moment. He's had a terrific preparation but I think they bumped into a really smart one today Jane. That was very impressive. Yeah she's a mirror I've always had a little bit of time for. She's a nice style of horse and although she's athletic and she's going to get better as she steps up over a little bit more ground this preparation. The team had her really forward in terms of her overall condition. I thought she looked fantastic in the art. I was actually quite surprised by the comments of Jack Turnbull uh, pre-race but uh, nice for connections that she's been able to deliver first up. Let's hear from Jack again. Jack, you said that, you know, first up, she was going to be ridden quiet to, to find the line. Did you think she could find the line like that? Uh, well, you, you're always hopeful, but um, she's a talented mare and it worked out. There was a lot of speed on and, um, yeah, like last 50, she really lengthened, dropped, got down low and uh, it, was, it was a pretty watch. Clearly evident that she's come back well this campaign, I would have thought. She has. She's actually been a little bit um, later than expected. The owners have been very patient. We, we backed off her. Um, Julian Welsh and his crew have done a, a lot of work with her too. She just wasn't there and we gave her some time, but patience rewarded today for, for Ben Cooper and the crew in the horse and um, yeah, it's great to see her get back to form. Can that pay dividends, that patience? What, what's her level this spring? Where can she sort of get to, do you think? We think she's black type, so um, yeah, we'll try and map a program into a, into a, a stakes race but um, just great to see her get the win today and, and show what talent she does have. I know it's always hard immediately after the race. You've got three, you don't know which way to, to look. Did you get a chance to, to keep an eye on, on the other two and a quick assessment on their performances? Yeah, Galactic Fury, he never really got in. He was a bit um, unlucky during the run, so um, yeah, we'll have to go back and have a closer look, but Arnold was good. Uh, he got back in a similar spot to Matron and worked home uh, as good as, as her, really. Um, looked to be sort of three quarters off, so uh, we'll have to go back and dissect the race. Nice way to finish the day, mate. Go enjoy it with plenty of happy owners. Will do. Thank you. Jack Turnbull there representing Kieran Ma and David Eustace. They had the three-pronged attack in the race and 
they get the results here with uh, with Jamie Carr in the saddle having a, a quick chat to Connections. She'll wander over and, and weigh it in and, and make it official. But, uh, guys, a good day for the office for, for Jamie Carr. She rides a, a double, not quite the, the heroics of Blake Shin with a, a treble, but a good day uh, in the saddle nonetheless. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Jamie Carr's had a terrific day in the saddle. She's bookended the program. She took out race number one. It's been a long day for her. She takes out race number eight uh, aboard a mare that I think we can follow with a little bit of confidence through this campaign. Yeah, without doubt, I think she'll be pretty keen to, to keep that ride as she progresses through the grades. And, and, gee, she's in a great camp to be well-placed and continue through the grades. Jamie, a double on the program. She's with JT. Yeah, nice way to finish the day on a mare that was first up and she's come back with wings. Yeah, look, I've been trialling her and I had been her and wish all last to pick and it was a tough decision um, so everything worked out in the end I'm glad I got to be on her and she's been jumping out okay but I think she's more of a race day horse she doesn't really show much at home and um, I thought she ran well today but that surprised me. Yeah, it sounded like it surprised connections as well they were expecting a, a nice run but but nothing like that it probably you know means that she's in for a, a good campaign. Yeah definitely from the wide door I went back just to give her a nice early half of the race and I'd be happy if she ran on and that was yeah that was fantastic to do that from where she was was very impressive so she's in for a good prep. Nice to start to build this momentum back up heading into the height of spring. Yep it's, uh, it's been a hard few weeks but we're getting there. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, she's now two from two at Flemington and when you look at her wander around the mountain yard you can see why she appreciates the big roomy track and the nice long straight here. Settled where we thought she would in the running and she's shown a nice turn of foot to get over top of them. Yeah, absolutely. And there's another visual for just how well this track has played today as well. With that rail out 14 metres, winners have come from everywhere but it's certainly been no disadvantage to be back in that running line and, and she's a big strong mare that just loves getting that room. She was back last and look she was trucking into the race at this stage at around the the 350 but tasman parker who hits the front here at the 300 meters he'd had the lovely run in behind the speed and and yes you could say he got there a bit too soon but he was first up as was matron bullwinkle and, and he had his chance he's a good horse there's wins in him to come don't worry about that the market loves him I think winning a horse that flashed late was quite good and Arnold as well did run on quite well from, from back in running but Matron Bullwinkle, that was a, a terrific victory and Jamie Carr bookends the program and, and that's a mare that they can take through the grades as well and if you want to say that uh, you can't go through the grades, just have a look at a horse like Right You Are as well they'll, they'll be placing that mare to perfection and she'll be able to keep notching up wins Spring Classics preview day done and dusted here at Flemington. Eight races run and won some standout performances from our jockeys. Two for Jamie Carr, three for Blake Shin. It's time now for Salts to award the ride of the day. Stoke.